Turn with me, if you would, to, in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to look at a familiar passage here, starting in verse 10. The Bible reads, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And what I want to preach tonight a little bit about is soul winning. And I want you to notice verse 15, it says, In your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You see, in the Bible, the gospel is often associated with the feet. Yeah. Amen. Because we're to take the gospel to the lost. Amen. It has the idea of going. Amen. You know, some, some other passages on this is Romans 10, verse 15. Right. It says, And how shall they preach except they be sent? Right. As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. And in Psalms 126, 6, it says, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. So there's some promises here and some commandments here that we are to go right. to the lost Amen. with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, and, and the church often gets confused on this. People want to bring the lost into the church. Right. No, the church is for the saved. It's a called out assembly of believers. Amen. You know, we don't want to bring wickedness and lost and worldly people in the church. We need the church to go, to go to a wicked, lost, and dying world and evangelize them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus put it this way in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. So he tells us to go. You know, that's a commandment for us as a church, is that we're supposed to take that gospel, go with it unto the lost, and share it with them so that they could be saved just like we were, and then bring them back into the church after they're saved, and teach them to do likewise. That is God's plan for reaching the lost world. Hey. You know, and I, I've talked to a lot of different pastors and people. And they say, well, I just don't think soul winning works. They want to they do like a lemonade stand right. and like, right. <laughs> like uh, well, we need a promotional like soup dinner to bring people into the church. But that's all they care about is getting people into the church. Right. Right. They don't care if they're saved or lost. Right. They just want to feel good and feel like I'm the pastor of a big, successful crowd of people. You know, and they're not concerned with whether these people are saved or not, yeah. or these people know how to give the gospel or not. All they're concerned with is the numbers. But we as a church, as a believing group of, of, of people here, we need to be concerned about going out and yeah. preaching the gospel. Yeah. But the focus of my, of my message is going to actually be on verse 17. And it says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You see, my friend, we're in a battle here. Amen. The Bible says we're in a war. You know, we're warring not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. We're supposed to be putting on the whole armor, not so that we can sit at home and watch television. Right. Not so that we can sit in the church and feel good about ourselves. Right. What good is the armor if we're not actually out there fighting the enemy? Right. Amen. You know, when you put on armor, you're supposed to be going to battle. Yeah. And the Bible says, go ye therefore. Yeah. Amen. You know, that's what the armor's for is when we go out, we're going to encounter resistance. Right. You know, we're going to face false religion. We're going to face reprobates. We're going to face people that don't want us to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what that armor is for. And we have one weapon, the Bible says. The Bible. Amen. The sword, the Bible calls it. You know, this reminds me of a familiar passage that Paul also wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 2. If you'd turn there with me real quickly. Verse 3, the Bible reads, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. The Bible says we are soldiers in the Lord's army here. It says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. So we see here, Paul says we're soldiers in the Lord's army. That's what this battle is for. 
And if you skip down to verse 8, he's going to tell us what this battles all are about. It's very similar to Ephesians 6. It says, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not found. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And in verse 14, of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. You know, that's what he's enduring all things for. That's why he's suffering in bonds, is it so others might be saved. That's the battle that Paul's willing to give up everything for right. is so that he can reach a lost and dying world. Amen. He says, that's what we need to remember. That's what we need to keep in mind as soldiers of Jesus Christ. Put them, therefore, in remembrance. You know, this is the gospel that we're supposed to be willing to give our lives for. We're supposed to be willing to put that armor on and go out and fight no matter what the cost, Amen. whether we be bond or free. Right. And uh, we're going to fight that battle, you know, with a sword. Let me share with you, those who haven't heard about it, we had a story last night talking about fighting against principalities and darkness and rulers of this world. You know, we went out soul winning and we encountered some resistance, which we've been having lately. We've been kicked out of three different apartment complexes right. probably in the last month. And uh, last night I encountered a cop who also worked for, for the place we were witnessing at. Very rude, very hateful, very against us reaching people with the gospel. And, you know, it just upsets me that, you know, when we go out to witness that the world's against us. But right. I guess you shouldn't expect anything less. Paul encountered right. it in right. his day, right. and they imprisoned him. Right. You know, I'm thankful I'm in a nation right now where I can still preach the gospel yeah. and not be put in prison. But I don't see uh, a day very far off where that's going to yeah, be the case. Right. Yeah, right. I have a feeling that as the world gets more wicked, you know, our limits on preaching the gospel are going to get narrower yeah. and narrower and narrower. And we have a limited time right now where we can preach it freely without getting put in jail or without being greatly persecuted like the early church was. Um, let's see here. This weapon we have, it says the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You know, this weapon we have is very powerful. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through, the God, through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Jeremiah 23.29 says, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? You see, God has given us a weapon where we can overcome the enemy. Amen. You know, he's not left us to fight a battle without a weapon, without equipment to go about to do it. You know, and tonight, you know, I want to try to muster the armies of the Lord to get back into battle. Tonight, I want to give some battle plans to defeat the enemy. Tonight, I want to strengthen the arms of the Lord's people. Tonight, I want to say, onward, Christian soldiers. Tonight, I want to blow the trumpet and shout the battle cry, the sword of the Lord and of Emmanuel Baptist Church. Amen. You know, but a lot of people are not in the fight. If you go back to, uh, let's see here in my notes. If we go back to uh, 2 Timothy, it says in verse 4, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You see, you can't fight in the Lord's army and get caught up in the things of this world. Right. You know, if you're wanting a high-powered career, you know, I think of money. If you're wanting to, to live for money and you just want to be, you know, really successful there, you're going to have to devote your time and energy to that. Right. You know, if you want to be a great athlete, you're going to have to devote your time and energy to that. And we as parents ought to watch out for that with our children, right. not to have them, you know, just so concerned with sports. I'm right. not against sports, but even as adults, it seems like that's what I always hear people talking about, basketball, yep. football. That's right. You know, I don't, I don't watch any sports. I don't care. Yeah. It's a waste of time. It's a distraction. Amen. It keeps people from serving the Lord. That's right. Amen. You know, we need to not be distracted with the things of this world, the affairs of this life. We need to, to seek to please him who's chosen us to be soldiers. You know, it reminds me of a passage in Matthew 13 with the sower and the seed. Jesus put it this way. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh 
unfruitful. Yes, you see, you can take a soul winning Christian, and if he gets caught up in this life, the Bible says he'll be choked and become unfruitful. That's yeah. right. You know, he's not going to win very many souls for Christ while he's out there looking for a promotion. Yeah. He's not going to win very many souls for Christ while he's following the sports game. Yeah. He's not going to win very many souls where he's too caught up in athletics or any other distraction in this life that right. the world can afford us. Our focus as soldiers needs to be on pleasing our commander-in-chief, Jesus Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to do that, we need to, to realize that it's going to take all of our energies and efforts. We need to be committed to the battle. And... You know, I think part of the problem as the church today is that uh, we don't really know how to use the sword. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people, we've got a powerful weapon, and, and we just don't know how to use it as a church. Most believers, you know, I think if you were to talk to them, could not lead somebody to Christ. Yeah, right. You could say, here's someone who wants to be saved. You show them how, they'll believe it. And they couldn't do it. Yeah. You know, they'll say, well, pray a prayer. <laughs> Come on. As long as you meant it, you're going to heaven. Right? Well, just accept Jesus. Right? You know, well, I don't know what to tell you. I guess, you know, John 3, 16, I'll just read it to you and you figure out the rest. You know, we've got a church full of people who couldn't lead somebody willing and wanting to be saved. Yeah. That's a scary thing. Right. You know, how are we supposed to fight a battle if we don't know how to use a weapon? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I mean, let me give you an example. If you were going to fight a professional boxer... Let's say I was going to put Dave in the ring with a professional boxer. And this boxer, I mean, he's up there and he's ready to, to knock Dave's head off. And I send him in there untrained, unprepared. He's got no skills in boxing. He's never boxed before. He's going to go into that boxing ring and get just whipped up on, right? Mm -hmm. And he's going to come crawling back and say, I never want to do that again. And yet we're sending out Christians, yeah. soul winning, in the fight. And they don't have a clue on how to use God's weapon. Right. They're not getting any training before they go out. And they go out and they get whipped by the world, by religious leaders, by people who, who stump them with these questions. You know, they get persecuted and they come crawling back and say, I never want to do that again. Right. I don't understand why people want to do this. This isn't enjoyable. This is terrible. I was nervous. I hated it the whole time. I didn't know what to say. Well, there's a problem. The church is failing to train people. The church is failing to show people, here's how you use the sword effectively. You know, I wouldn't want to fight a sword battle in real life without some training. Yeah. That's a dangerous battle. And we ought to be giving people training on how to fight this battle against spiritual wickedness, these rulers of the darkness of this world. And this training is to take place at the local New Testament church, not Bible college or some cemetery where you Amen. pay money Amen. to have people tear down the Word of God right. and replace it with a butter knife but in the pillar and the ground of the truth, which is the church. This Amen. is the training ground for believers. Amen. Amen. This is where soul winners are supposed to be raised up. That's this right. is where Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, That's right. yeah. teaching them to observe all things. Well, the disciples knew how to win people to Jesus Christ, and I'm just guessing that they taught the people that they saved how to do likewise. Amen. Right. And that's our job as a church. We've got a bunch of people that are saved, but they don't know how to do likewise. Right. And nobody's teaching them how to do it. Nobody's teaching them. We're failing at the Great Commission because nobody knows how to use a sword. Now I'm looking tonight. We've got two pastors in the room. We've also got a lot of young men, I think, that want to be pastors. I know that's the desire of my heart one day is to be a pastor. So I'm going to speak to all of us tonight. I think this applies to everyone, but specifically pastors or those who want to be pastors, a pastor is an overseer or a bishop. They are the overseers of the flock of God. You know, they're considered an under-shepherd, Jesus Christ being the chief shepherd. Mm -hmm. But a pastor's job is to oversee the flock. You know, when they see a little lamb wandering off into, you know, false doctrine, saying the Jews are God's chosen people in the New Testament, they need to correct that. They need to use that rod to bring them back into place. Yeah. You know, when they see the little lamb saying, well, maybe maybe it is predestination. Maybe, you know, there is different dispensations to get saved in. They need to correct that false doctrine, bring that lamb back into the fold. Amen. That's part of a job as a pastor. Yeah. Well, part of a job as a pastor is also to train those lambs on how to win souls, how to reproduce. Right. You know, if the lambs quit reproducing, you're going to have a pretty small flock after a while. <laughs> Amen. You know, and, and that's the job of a pastor. And that, you know, those who want to be pastors... That's a great responsibility. Mm -hmm. You right. will give an account someday before God as a pastor 
for every member in your church. Now, they're, you're going to even count on how they acted, sure. What type of soldier were they? But also, God's going to say, why didn't you train them? And you say, well, he wasn't a soul winner. Did you try to train him to be a soul winner? So God lays on us a great responsibility if you want to be a pastor or if you are a pastor, that part of your responsibility is to train those and to watch out for those that are under your oversight. Sure. And that's the job of a pastor. And someday they will give an account before God. So every member, you know, you hear the term, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Every member ought to know how to solve it. That's right. Sure. We ought to be talking to every member in the church and making sure they can win somebody to Christ. Yeah. Now, those who don't want to be pastors, you know, it still applies to you as, a, as the overseer of your family. Amen. You know, as men, we are the authority in our family. Right. We Amen. are the leaders. Right. You know, God has given us that responsibility, and we are accountable for it. That's right. Can your wife lead somebody to Christ? Come on. Can your children lead somebody to Christ? Come on. Yeah. You know, your wife spends a lot of time with your children. That's right. She might be the one that's witnessing to them when they start having questions about the Bible. You know, our wives, it's our responsibility as men, not only for ourselves to know how to give the gospel, that our wives know how to give the gospel. You know, the Great Commission wasn't just to men. It's to all believers. Right. Women ought to be soul winners. Amen. I didn't realize that we as Christians outnumbered the world and we can have just people on the benches. I didn't realize we were doing that successful, that there's more on the right road than the wrong road. I didn't realize we didn't need men, women, and children. We need every believer to be a soul winner. And our wives, it's our responsibility as husbands to make sure they know how to give the gospel clearly. Our children, it's our responsibility that they know how to give the gospel clearly. Right. They may be running into other children that they can witness to. And they're going to grow up to be adults someday. And what you teach them as a child, train them up in the way that they should go and they'll not depart from it when they are. And we ought to start training them from a young age. That's why I was encouraged to see some of our families bringing their children out solely. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. Amen. And that's what I want to do when I have you know, children old enough to go. Right. That's what I want to do. And it's, it's a real encouragement to see that. So as soldiers, I want to give some three basic things that we need to fight the battle. And uh, the first is a plan of attack. You know, you don't go to battle without first having a plan. You don't just rush in there and fight that boxer without first having a plan of attack. And in our case, a gospel plan. If you want to win the loss, then you need to have a clear presentation of the gospel. Right. I've had the privilege of going out with a lot of different people in our church and even in other churches. And I think one of the number one things that I think throws people off is if they don't have a plan, they're all over the place. Yeah. And I, I think back to my early years of, of soul winning, and I know that I didn't have a plan. I just, you know, John 3.16, John 10.28, I was just all over the Bible, you know, just telling them, no, you can't lose your salvation, it's eternal, you know. And, I, you know, I didn't win very many people, you know, because I didn't have a plan, but... When I started using a good, clear gospel presentation, I won many, many more souls to the Lord. Very effective. And I felt a lot more confident. I wasn't as scared to go into the battle knowing that I had a good plan that works. Mm -hmm. You know, and as a church, we need to be giving people a clear plan of the gospel that they can use when they go out so that they're not just defenseless on their own saying, I don't know where to go. I don't have anything prepared. I'm just guessing. You know, let's equip them to do it. Don't send them out unequipped where they're saying, well, I don't know what to do. Let's equip them to fight the battle. Give them a plan of attack. The second thing we need as soldiers is fitness. We need to be spiritually fit if we're able to endure a fight. You know, we've got Jeff here. He, he does some fighting. And I'm sure he can tell you that, you know, even three minutes with somebody can really exhaust the body. You know, when we're out soul winning, you know, just a short amount of time, you know, it can really take a toll. You're going to have to maybe bring up a lot of verses, a lot of different things. It's, and Dave was telling us the other day, he was just exhausted after giving the gospel after person after person. We need to be spiritually fit. And one of the ways we can do that is by reading the Bible. Right. You know, and I'm not talking about getting on the treadmill for five minutes with the three chapters a day routine. <laughs> okay, I'm talking about reading through the Bible multiple times a year. Amen. Multiple times. You know, Alexander Scorby reads it through in 71.8 hours. <laughs> 71.8 hours. If you devote an hour a day, you could get through it over four times a year. That's right. If you devote half an hour a day, that's over two times a year. So what we're really saying is we've got 15 minutes for God a day <laughs> or less to get through it one time a year. And you know, some people aren't even doing that. It's not hard to get through the Bible twice a year, mm -hmm. even three times a year. It's very doable. 
Very doable. And if we want to be spiritually fit to go out and win this battle, we need to be in the Word of God. That is our weapon. We need to spend a lot of time using our weapon and getting to know our weapon. And the second thing that goes with that fitness is memorizing. You know, we need to have the Bible verses for winning somebody to Christ memorized. Committed to our heart where we know them without even having to think about it. You know, I'll tell you a story about my wife. You know, when uh, she was a new Christian, I, I started pushing her to read the Bible. I said, no, you're going to read the Bible. And at first she resisted. But of course, being the person that I am, you know, I <laughs> hounded her and hounded her until she, she's read through the Bible almost twice now in just a short amount of time. I said, you're going to get through the Bible. And the more she reads it, she's actually loving it now. You know, you tend to, it's just like working out. You might first hate it, but you desire, you end up learning to love something that uh, you get used to. And people need to get used to spending time in God's Word, but also memorizing. You know, I said, here's the, the, the maybe ten verses or so that I use when I'm out soul winning. This is the basic plan. You know, and you're going to memorize all ten verses, word for word. And I gave her the list. I said, you're going to memorize them. And I said, now I'm going to quiz you on So every time I'd see her in the car, we'd talk on the phone. I said, quote the verses to me, word for word. Start off John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. And if she forgets to say John 3, 16 at the end, do it again five times to prove that you know how to say it right. You say, that seems awful strict, Mike. Yeah, but she knows those verses by heart now. Amen. And she told me recently, I'm so thankful you made me do that. She said, I have so much more confidence when I go out door to door now, knowing that I have these verses memorized, that I don't even have to look if it's dark, or if the Bible's upside down, or if I start to forget where I'm going. I've got the verses memorized. I've got the plan memorized by heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do as a church, is make our believing members memorize a basic soul winning plan. Ten verses is not hard to learn. It didn't take her that long to do it. And then we need to add to that plan, you know. We need to, to, to equip them to fight with the sword, these extra obstacles that are going to come up. You know, if somebody says James 2, you know, well, faith without works is dead, we need to give our members, our fighters, our soldiers, some ammunition on how to combat that. Yeah. And say, hey, go to Romans 4. It talks about Abraham there, too. And he was justified by faith. But over in James 2, it says he was called the friend of God. And in John 15, it says, You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. That's right. Teach them some verses that will get them through those hard, hard things. But first, teach them the basics. And you can add to that. You can add verses on proving that Jesus is God, like 1 Timothy 3.16. You can add extra verses on believing, like John 6.47. You can add verses on how we receive the Holy Ghost, like John 7.37-39. Okay, we can add to that, but they first need to, to do the basic plan. And we as a church are not doing it. I'm just going to say it, we're not doing it. Most of our members don't have the verses memorized. Most of our members don't have a plan of attack, and therefore they're failing. Yeah, we've got some people winning people. It's the same people every week. Yeah. We need every person. We need every person in the battle, and we need every person to be fit enough to go and fight it. Thirdly, we need training. There needs to be practice and training on the skills needed to win someone to Christ. Testing on the Bible memorization. Training on going through the steps of the plan. Training on starting a conversation. Training asking questions to find out what a person believes. You know, you can't just ask somebody, what's it take to get to heaven? They say, accept Jesus and then leave the door. Right. You know, you need to find out what's in the heart. You need to ask enough questions and the right questions to get to what they believe in their heart. And that's something that takes training. People don't just naturally come to that on their own. They need to be trained. You know, we need training on how to answer certain questions a lot of person might ask you. Training on how to keep a conversation on track when they start to try to derail you with some other point that's trivial compared to the gospel. Training on how to explain what it means to believe. You know, people don't even know what it means to believe in, in Amen. Jesus. Say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what's that mean? We need to explain to people how to show others what it means to believe on Jesus Christ. We need training on every aspect of the fight. So those are the three things I would say that as a church, every church needs to be doing, but specifically this church. You know, I think we've got a church with a, a decent soldering program. You know, if we compare ourselves to the other churches in the areas, you know, we're going to look great. But I'm not concerned with comparing myself to, you know, Free Will Baptist Church down the road that doesn't even believe the gospel. Right. I'm concerned with what God thinks of us as a church. Amen. You know, does God look down and say, man, they're doing everything possible to make sure that their people are trained up and know how to give the gospel? 
Are they doing everything they can to reach the lost? I don't, I don't believe we are. You know, maybe some people want to justify themselves, but as a church, yeah, we're, we're doing more than most. But not every. Where is everybody tonight? Right. Where's everybody on Thursday night? Every person that sits in a pew ought to be here on a Thursday, a Saturday, or a Sunday. They ought to be going out soul winning. Mm -hmm. We need every fighter we can get. And it's the responsibility of every believer to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, well, let me just say, I mean, I think some people excuse themselves from soul winning. You know, they say, well, Mike, you know, it's just not my gift to go soul winning. You know, I, I just, I'm not, that's not what God's called me to do. Well, the Bible says we're all commanded to do it. Amen. You know, I, you know, it's like they say, well, I pray for soul winning. And I give money to missions. And I, I, I do all these other things, but I just don't go soul winning. You know, and I can understand if you're, you're an invalid and you're in, you know, some sort of day center for the elderly. But that is not 99.9% .9 of our church members. Mm -hmm. right. now, if they can make it to church, they can make it out soul winning. Okay. okay? Pretty much every person that shows up at these services could be a soul winner. Right. Well, what they want to say is, why well, I, I pray for the soul winners. I'm not meant to go out and do that. That's not my calling. Okay? That's like me saying, well, I can go soul winning, so I don't have to pray. I don't need to ever pray, ever. I'm a soul winner. That's my calling. I'm, I'm called to soul win. I don't need to pray. Right? Because you said you pray, so you don't need to go soul winning. Yeah. You've just excused yourselves from what God commanded you to do by saying, well, I'm doing something else. No, a soul winner is supposed to pray as well. Church, and guess what? I can say, well, I go soul winning. I don't need to tithe. I don't need to give. <laughs> That's your job. I'll just go soul winning and you support me through your tithing. How many pastors would like that? <laughs> hmm? Not very many. You know, it's ridiculous to think that just because you pray or give that that excuses you from the work. Right. We're all to be doing the work. Yeah. You say, well, I don't know how to do it. You learn. Ask somebody that knows how. If you're not getting trained, then, then get with somebody that knows how to do it and let them train you. Mm -hmm. But really, as a church, we ought to be training people. That's, that's our job as a church, is to train every single member. You know, and people excuse themselves, well, I visit, or I pray, or I type. Those are all good things. We need to be doing all of them. But the main thing that we're here for is to be a light to the world, and that's through the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can't excuse ourselves and say, well, I, I just pray for people. You know, it's my prayer that, you know, as long as I have strength in my arms, that I'm going to cleave to that sword. Let me read a passage for you out of 2 Samuel 23. It says, He arose, talking about Eleazar, and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clave unto the sword. And the Lord wrought, wrought a great victory that day. So my, 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 my desire is that until the day that I die, unless God sees fit to, to basically make me a handicapped person as I get older, I want to have that sword of the Lord in my hand. I want to have that Bible in my hand. Mm -hmm. I want to be a witness. Mm -hmm. I want to bring forth fruit in old age. You know, and that ought to be the desire of every person here. Mm -hmm. But specifically as a church, I just believe that we need to be training our people. We're going to give an account of that someday, and it needs to be what we need to do if we're going to reach the world. Let me close with prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, Jesus Christ, the greatest soul winner that ever walked the face of the earth, Lord, we're thankful for your example, Lord. We see in Scripture you going from city to city, from town to town, Lord, preaching the gospel. We know that it was important to you, and if we want to follow in your footsteps, Lord, we need to be soul winners. If we want to please you, Lord, as a soldier, we need to be in the battle, Lord. Please help us, Lord, as a church to, uh, to reach more people in Morgantown and around the world. Help us to, to learn how to use your word effectively, Lord, and to, to be a great witness for you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.